Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Lau, and we are live on a Sunday afternoon. I to think what day it was, <laughs> which means it's time for us to talk about coping strip. And I just want to apologize for putting the warning up and the whole hour earlier but I just was um but you know I'm certain some of you will relate to that and if you do relate to that if you forgot to turn one clock back or you know got caught on this um daylight savings time let me know that I wasn't the only one I thought I had them all covered but apparently not so much now you're going to see me um play a little bit here because for some reason uh I have lost the dongle you know that's the little bit that you put in I've got Got a um, <laughs> a mouse, and the bit that goes into the computer is called a dongle. And I've uh, managed to displace what I did with mine when I was moving it from one computer to another. So if you see my hand more than normal, it's because I need to get up to where the computer is uh, to do things. Um. All right. So Isabel, happy birthday! I see that you're there, and uh, that's wonderful. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. I you know, it's funny because um, it's just like, wow, i got to remember to to do birthdays. So what I'm going to do today when I do birthdays in a second is I'm going to name all the ones for November in case it takes me longer to recover than I think. <laughs> it's the only way I can think to do it. Um, you know, I, I often quote the monk Tich um, Khan, who said, smile, breathe and go slowly. I want to tell you, it is very difficult to smile, breathe, and go slowly at the moment. Hi to Alice in Denmark, and hi to Charlotte. And uh, um, I imagine would be quite a chilly east coast of Canada. Uh, it's certainly chilly here in on the west coast, so I'm certain it must be chilly on the east coast. I want to say that for those of you who don't know, Dear Mama Sal is a group of people who get together uh, three times a week. However, for the last uh, little while or for the coming little while, I, I may not be able to do that. <laughs> I'm hoping that, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm going in for a mastectomy on Thursday. And so I'm not quite sure how long it will take me to get my marbles going well enough that I'll be able to do a broadcast again. But I will try and update you as best I can. So before we get on to birthdays and things, I don't know if there are any other special mentions. Obviously, um, I would like to uh, give um, thoughts and prayers to Jody. She's had a really tough week this week. And she um, just, you know, she's such a trooper. But she's been trying to get the right medic or the medication that will help what's going on for her. And she can't seem to get it right. So, you know, please give your thoughts and prayers for her. I know she doesn't like publicity, <laughs> you know, so and she'd never asked for thoughts and prayers. But, you know, so be it. And since when did I listen to what Jody told me? So <laughs> big hugs to you, Jody, And uh, just hang in there. You're going to, you know, if, if we're going to have a difficult week and that's all there is to it. So just in case you missed it, um, Nana had a birthday on the 2nd. Isabel, happy birthday to you. Birthday is today. Kimmy's is on the 9th. Sandy's is on the 10th. Trina in Cork in Ireland is is on the 22nd and American Thanksgiving will be on November the 25th. Now I think I've got November covered, right? I'm hoping so. Our topic today is about boundaries and self-care. I cannot tell you how important looking after your own self-care is when you're about to go through something that I'm going through. Oh, by the way, I gave thoughts and prayers for everybody. Obviously, I'd like a few for myself as well. I mean, I don't mind admitting that. All right, Alice is saying she's having a tough time, had a bad fall down the stairs on Friday night and in lots of pain. I am so sorry to hear that, Alice. And there's not much we can do for you except put out thoughts and prayers. So, Jody, if you're capable of writing a note, let's um, put up some thoughts and prayers for Ace um, after the broadcast. When I say we, I mean I, but could you please remind my brain? Because <laughs> you know what it's like by the time I've done the end of the broadcast. Thanks, honey. So they say that boundaries are part of um, self-care. Do you agree? Boundaries are part of your self-care. They are healthy, normal, 
and boy, do I know they're necessary. Now, you might wonder, you know, I've, it's probably been one of the most selfish weeks I've ever had. And the reason that I say that is because I know the most important thing I can do this week is look after me. You know, make sure that I stay as calm as possible. Make sure I stay in the present as much as possible. Make sure I don't worry about everybody else um, too much. You know, it's just like it's really important for me to look after me. And the interesting thing is I'm not really used to doing that. You know, I don't mind admitting that. <laughs> I'm much happier when I'm helping other people. You know that. Um, all right, let's get some things in here. Obviously, people are uh, relating to Alice, or otherwise called Ace, by the way, for those of you who don't know, um, and wishing her well. And, yeah, take it easy. And Alice is saying thanks. Going to the doctor's tomorrow, that's a good idea. I was too stubborn to go to the ER when it happened. Yeah, it's amazing how those things come back to bite us, right? Um, and I say that, Alice, because, you know, you know me well enough. I mean, you've known me for a long time to know that, you know, getting help is not something I do either very well. Um, Jeannie's saying you're looking good, your hair, your scarf, your demeanor. Actually, it's just called a, it's attached to the sweater. What, what, is that a snook? I know Jody always tells me. I think it's called a snook. In other words, I can walk out and, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> Um, uh, my demeanor, interesting, Jeannie. Um, you know, I've been working really hard on that this week. It's been difficult in places, I don't mind telling you, as you're going to hear. How about this one? Self-compassion is simply giving the same kindness to ourselves that we would give to others. Oh, you like it even more when it flips up? Is that right, Jeannie? Okay, well, there you go. I can keep you happy. <laughs> And now I can remember what I looked like before I let my hair grow. Yeah, I might do that again one day. All right. So, <laughs> it's so cute. Is it called a snook? Snood? What is it called? Jody? I know you always tell me. And maybe you can't remember either. <laughs> all right. So, um, now then. I think you all know a snood. Yes, that's what I had. I had a feeling that's what it was called. Um, I, I think you all know that I designed my kitchen so that I would stretch every day. How many of you remember that? You know, I especially put things up high so every day I would be able to stretch. You know, it's called why go to the gym when I can create my own? Jody will tell you when I was having problems with arthritis, I actually built a steeplechase through my house. So when I needed to go to the washroom, I had to climb over things, you know, walk over things rather than just walk straight. Why? It made me concentrate on using both my hips and doing things. So I do things like that. Now, why is that important? Well, Obviously, I'm not coming straight home. I'm going to Doug's first. I think you all know that. Um, when Doug releases me, because <laughs> you know he's going to be quite a mother hen. I have a feeling. Um, when he releases me and brings me home, uh, I will obviously have to be very careful when I come home. One of the things I'm not allowed to do um, then... You know, I'm not allowed to uh, to reach for anything, especially I'm just I'm trying to find out if I'm allowed to reach with my left hand. But I definitely am not allowed to reach with the the mastectomy side uh, for, I think, at least two weeks or something. Um, yeah, yeah, Sharon's saying if Doug releases you. Yeah. And she's laughing about that. Well, you have to know, Doug. I think you do. Right. He's a man. And he's never known me to be vulnerable, Sharon. Think about that. He's never known me to be vulnerable. He's never seen me near a hospital, never mind having parts of my body removed, you know, and he's, bless his heart. Um, what can I say? Uh, with tears in my eyes, he, he's, this is not going to be easy for him, but he will do everything within his power. Uh, Alice is saying, you look good, so it's maybe because you're more focused on taking good care of yourself at the moment. Yeah, I, I really am doing what I can. Um, so 
let's have a little think about this. So you understand, Jody is saying my 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 thing about making myself exercise in my own house on a daily basis by the things where I store things and so forth. She said, if that's not inspiring, I don't know what is. Obstacle course. Well, I tell you what's inspiring. And I meant to mention it at the onset, uh, uh, at the beginning of this. Hang on a second. What did I see here? Right. Sharon. Am I allowed to show the picture? Hang on a second. Sharon, I, I want to know if I'm allowed to show the picture of your craft room. Doom, 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 doom. So you remember I did a broadcast from my craft room. Ah, thank you. Um, and Sharon, am I allowed to also mention the other thing? <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. Well, anyway, you, I did this broadcast from my craft room. And as you know, I got cubies everywhere and all part of the organization. So Sharon showed me she's got now a craft room in, in progress. Isn't that wonderful? It's such a good way to keep craft stuff organized. So I just can't, I believe I missed that picture. Sharon, I was so upset when I realized I'd missed it. Mind you, I did have a couple of things on my mind this week. So, yeah, uh, Alice is saying you're lucky to have Doug take care of you. It's no joke being all alone. They will not let me out of the hospital unless I had somebody to look after me for a minimum of the first 24 hours. And that they, they did use the word responsible adult. That sort of cut out a lot of my friends. Um, <laughs> that's what they said, a responsible adult, not just an adult, a responsible one. Um, and so, you know, and it was funny thing was that Yvonne was busy trying to make a plan and Doug wouldn't hear of anything. You know, Doug just wasn't going to discuss this. You're coming to my house. <laughs> you know, and Doug doesn't do that sort of stuff. So I just said to Yvonne, I think we need to let him do this. Um, now, can any of you understand? Um, that there is an awful lot going on. There are a lot of things I have to have in place for the surgery, but there are also a lot of things I have to have in place in the house because I'm going to go to have the operation and then presuming everything's great there, I will leave there, go to Doug's. Don't know how many days I will spend there. And then I will return home. But I had to literally think about what would I need within the first month that is presently high up that needs to come down. Does that make sense to everybody? Because I'm not going to be able to do this for probably a month. Um, I think I can start a little bit after two weeks, but nothing heavy. You know, I can I can maybe grab a cup, but nothing heavy. I'm not allowed to. First of all, I'm not allowed to stretch for the first two. Um, Sharon's just give me the okay. I just want to say how kind Sharon was. Um, she sent me a gift certificate at Amazon. And, you know, you wouldn't have known this, Sharon, but I was busy and very upset because what I wanted to do is because, you know, I've been thinking about the things I'll be able to or not be able to do in terms of keeping fit you know, and, and so forth. And so... The interesting thing was that I managed, I think some of you know that my we broke down, not not my we, <laughs> my W-I-I we broke down, um, and Nintendo we uh, broke, uh, and, and so I haven't been able to use that, and you know, it's winter's coming, and you know, I saw that there was one in the States that had been refurbished, you know, by the manufacturer, and also there was a, a program that a lot of people um, talked about a walking program and I was I looked at it all and I went you know that's pretty expensive when I've got all these other costs with with um, you know special clothing and so forth get, getting um, organized for that and then boom Sharon sends me an Amazon gift card and so with tears in my eyes Sharon 
and I'm not making you cry. Um, I went, well, now it's half the price. So I'm going to get it because I deserve it. And it's towards better health during the cold winter months. And we know how much I used my Wii last year. And so to me, it's like that is an investment in my health. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm really appreciative. And <laughs> um, it's just like, you know, I don't believe in coincidences. So when I suddenly saw that that was there, I got advised by Amazon. I just went, what? And for some reason, they wouldn't let me transfer it into Canadian. So then I went back to the US one and I went, isn't that where I found the Wii? <laughs> so Sharon, <laughs> so excited. <laughs> so here are some things I've been up to. Um, let me just get my quotes back so I don't forget to do this. All right. Um, your own mind is a sacred enclosure into which nothing harmful can enter without your permission. How about that one? I've had a bit of problem with that this week. This week I've let a little bit more get into me, but you know I'm not perfect, but I've done well. But just I did have a couple of days that were more difficult. But I'm certain you all can understand that. You know, it's pretty pretty difficult time. And so what I found out is that I've got so much to deal with, right? Getting a house ready, getting, when I come back, you know, it'll be too late to look after my garden. And already the temperatures are plummeting here. So I had to get out in the garden to save some of my plants. And, you know, then I started to worry when I come back, I won't be able to stretch to water my, you know, peppers and tomatoes that are growing there. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I pulled those from the side and now put them along the front. So I don't have to, um, you know, don't have to stretch to water them. So you can imagine how many things, I've got plants everywhere at the moment inside. Good job you can't see it because I had to put them in places where I could water them easily when I come back. <laughs> and then you have to think, all right, I won't be able to wear clothes, proper clothes for at least, you know, probably the first week or so. Oh, maybe more until after the drains out. That could be two weeks. So, and the only clothes I can wear are button up down the front. And, you know, they're not easy. And you, know, you think about your wardrobe. How many things, clothes have you got, winter, cl winter clothes have you got that you can put on and button down the front? Why? Because if you think about it, getting into a um, sweater or something requires that you lift your hands, right? So they want things you can just pull over your hands, your arms, not stuff you have to. Anyway, I want to tell you, it's been a difficult time. So I had to buy some clothes that I didn't plan on buying. And I bought special ones ready for, did I show you those last week? Jody, did I show that last week? Do you know? Anybody? Did I show you the special stuff I bought? Yeah, Alice is saying it's all about doing being, doing your best, not about being perfect. Now, okay, hold on a sec. So I'm taking um, two outfits to Daggies on the principle that I can wear one while they wash the other. Um, but what I, first of all, I made sure I took warm sweaters with me. But what I'm going to have, let me try and describe this to you. Uh, when they take this boob off, <laughs> they will, uh, and take my lymph nodes, uh, they're going to put a, drain in there right like a hose pipe mini hose pipe and that will come down and into a um stuff collector let's put it you know drainage storage unit 
Um, and that's like a, a bulb. Yes, I know it's called a bulb, but I want to describe, rapidly describe why I needed a bulb. It's going to just, it's going to store whatever drains from the operation. Got it? And I have to keep emptying it, and there's special rules about how to do that. But it means I've got to walk around all day long with this bulb. So I didn't know it, but Jody managed to find, and Jody, thank you so much. She managed to find they actually make shirts especially for that. And the shirts have pockets in them to hold the bulb. And so I got two. I got one in gray because I got nice, easy to put on gray sweats. All right. Uh, and with the gray cardi. Because I'm basically going to be living in the same clothes, you know, for the first couple of days. And then I also got one in blue with the blue cardi, uh, Jody. So here you go. And it's also got the pockets in. Can you see? Yes, Sharon's saying the bulb should have a clip on it that will clip to your clothes. Um, I know that, but you know what I reckoned is at night, I would rather just know that it's safely contained. Does that make sense? Anyway, so now being me, I'm going, that's an expense I hadn't planned on in my budget. Uh, can I can I use them for anything else? And I was thinking, they are going to be so useful in the summer when I'm gardening. I can now put my cell phone into the inside pocket and garden, right? Because they're short-sleeved. So, and they will cover up my, you know, neck and everything so I won't get sunburned. Gray and navy, yeah, I thought they were nice choices for me. Uh, so, you know, I'm really enjoying wearing a sweater <laughs> because, you know, I'm not going to be able to wear sweaters for quite a while. How about this one? Uh, uh, Ash Alv said, it might be awkward for you to express your boundaries if you're not used to communicating your needs. I think we all relate to that, right? We're not good about communicating our needs, right? You can survive that awkward phase. I want to tell you, there were a couple of times this week, what I found out was um, people so want to support you, but it all takes time, right? They want to tell you they love you and you're going to be fine when they don't know that's true um, and, and, and so forth, you know. Uh, but, you know, it all takes time and people want to come visit and do things. And, you know, I had to really make sure that I stayed true to myself. I have allowed one visitor, as you will hear. Um, but, you know, other than that, I just said no. And the reason I allowed to, uh, the one visitor to come is, as you will hear, I had a reason for that, for my needs. Um, so can you relate to that, that everybody wants your time and space? in some way. And everybody obviously wants to tell their story. Yeah, Alice is saying, I'm having a hard time asking for help in any way. Some of us will relate to that. You know, we've been used to being alone. We've been used to being independent. We've been used to being self-sufficient. And so this, I, this whole process for me is going to be a study in receiving. And, you know, if, when I do the broadcast, you're going to hear about my challenges about receiving. So, Alice, maybe we'll be able to give you some pointers there. So it's not that I don't love the people that wanted to help me and, and do, you know, and come visit and socialize. It was just I didn't have the time or ability um, to look after me and deal with that. And, you know, even if it was just, can I come and give you a hug? It was just like... Not this week. <laughs> yeah. If you'd asked me last week, I would have been so happy. If you asked me in two weeks' time, I would be so happy. But nothing this week. Because I know how much I still have to do. All right? And so, therefore, no, I'm sorry. How about this one? It says, daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves even when we risk disappointing others. Boy, did I feel that one. I need to tell you that I didn't even have time to go into Confetti Corner this week or energy. Uh, I've got to, be, you know, it was just like, I, I know that it would have done me well. I probably wouldn't have lost my dongle if I'd done it. 
um, I I knew that it just that my mind wasn't tracking on being able to settle there. So I just didn't want to ruin anything because, you know, that stuff takes a lot of concentration. So I gave myself permission to have a binge watching sort of week. And I'm certain you guys can understand that. You know, I, I got up and I did things and I made sure I got my 6,000 steps in. Jody will attest to that because I reported every now. Of course, she has to believe me that I did it. I don't prove it. In my, yeah, Jody does. I wouldn't lie to her. Anyway, so, um, but I got my 6,000 steps a day. And, and that's that's the sort of stuff I'm concentrating on. Um, Alice is saying, I really don't have anyone to ask for help. So it's a little bit more complicated complicated. Yeah, one of the things I learned, Alice, is that um, even if you haven't got that family, you know, that one that we wish for, uh, it is up to us to create it, all right? And you notice I'm doing exercises just as I talk to you, right? Isn't that funny? <laughs> things that I do to exercise uh, in my day. Uh, so, Alice, I challenge you, you know, once you're feeling a bit better, I challenge you to um, think about that and go, you know, I need to get out. Uh, they're not lined up outside the door. One of my friends always said that to me about boyfriends. She said, do you see them lined up outside the door? And I, no. Well, then you need to go out and find them because then don't know you're hiding in here. <laughs> and I, you know, I've always remembered that, Alice. And it made me laugh at the time, but boy, wasn't that the truth? All right, if you want to have friends and, and people around you, you've got to go out and meet them. They, they don't know that you're inside alone. Um, I needed to get more sleep this week, and it hasn't happened. How many of you are going, yeah, I don't think I'd be sleeping much either. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is catnap during the day even though I'm not getting the normal sleep pattern. And part of me goes, I think my body is getting ready for the fact I'm going to have to get up about four o'clock in the morning on Thursday morning because I have to be at the clinic having showered and soaked down with this antiseptic soap and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I have to be at the clinic by 6.45 a.m. You know, this is time I'm normally going to sleep, people. So it's going to be a big challenge, but I can do it. I just have to, and I think my mind is knows that and is trying to make sure I don't do long sleeps in case I oversleep on Thursday. <laughs> Makes sense. Somewhere in there, there's logic. How about this one? In dealing with those who are undergoing great suffering, if you feel burnout setting in, if you feel demoralized and exhausted, it is best for you and for the sake of everybody, to withdraw and restore. Remember those words, withdraw and restore yourself. To the point, the, the point is you have to have a long-term perspective. So the fact that you need to look after you for a week isn't forever. It's just, I need it now. And Jody, I, I'm a great believer that, you know, there are times when, I know you're here when you shouldn't be. Well, you should because you're an adult and you make your own choice. But you understand what I'm saying, that it's okay um, to rest and, and restore yourself. And part of me, Jody, with all due respect, is going, it's probably a good thing that I've had to cancel a couple of broadcast days <laughs> and, and may still have to cancel more on the other side because that way Jody also gets to rest because, you know, she's not going to leave me here on my own. <laughs> It's not what Jody does. Um, how many of you can relate to the fact that I have literally pared my to-do list down to nothing? Very little. When very little for <laughs> I, I've got to <laughs> I've got to clarify that because Jody will be rolling her eyes. My idea of very little and your idea of very little could be a little bit different. Um, <laughs> am I still going out to get fresh air every day? Yes. Um, that is part of my doing very little. It's very important to me, uh, even though the weather is nasty. And, you know, this week it was really important for me to get those um, delicate flowers in because I knew we had the possibility of snow coming. We had a snow warning, if you can believe it. <laughs> and so I was out saving those plants and, and hoping that I could keep them going a little longer. 
<laughs> Jody's saying to me exactly there the the two my idea of doing nothing and and some other people's is, is slightly different. She's saying they're very different. She said I wear skates. <laughs> I I you know I feel lazy, Jody. I literally have felt lazy this week, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, Alice is saying I had to let my boss know that, that I wasn't able to work for the next few days at least. Not easy, but I did it. Well done, Alice. Very important. Daring to set boundaries is about having courage, the courage to love yourself even when we risk disappointing others. You know, exactly, Alice, you need to do that. And because they are, you know, setting those boundaries, I I value myself enough to take take the rest right now how many of you know getting a rest while I'm at Dougie's might be difficult because I will feel like I ought to be doing something uh, so I know that going home is about being able to go back to my schedule not somebody else's but that's probably why Doug wants to take me out of my schedule because she he knows I'd probably be doing too much um, now one of the things as I said I did invite uh, Yvonne and Wade and I invited them with a very big incentive, um, and that was to cook my three cheese mac and cheese. Uh, and I know that they will travel across broken glass to get to eat my three cheese mac and cheese, in which I put bacon, and I top it with uh, more grated cheese and with um, you know halved grape tomatoes got a picture you probably want to see the picture right let me see if I can find the picture for you hang on okay there it is now what I have to share with you is the next picture which was 20 minutes later if that and by the way that wasn't the final scraping <laughs> they went back, Yvonne and Wade went back and carried on <laughs> finishing up. Uh, really, I, I hardly had to wash the, the dish at all. Uh, you know something, Alice, maybe I will do that. I always think that my mac and cheese, you know, is, is not that exciting. But apparently it is, um, if I can quote Yvonne this morning. What did she say? Hang on, let me see what she said. No, she doesn't talk to me on that platform. She talks to me on another one. Hang on. I just want to make sure I quote her. No, can't find it. Anyway. Um... <laughs> ah, interesting. Alice is saying all mac and cheese is exciting to me. I want to tell you something. My mac and cheese is apparently to die for, but it does have flour in it. Just want to warn you about that. But you could use you could use almond flour if you're vegan or you know, don't like using flour. All right. So the other thing I had to do is ask Wade if he would cut off my bangle. You remember I said there are two things. I got to get rid of my ring and my bangle. The bangle has been on my hand since I was 13. Look at the shape of my hand can you see where it was and i think that de deformation or you know is going to be there probably for the rest of my life because obviously the size of my hands as i got bigger yeah the bangle didn't stretch with it so it but it is off and you managed to get it off and uh, i'm just going to have to deal with a funny shape hand now you understand that my finger can you see how much my finger is swollen above my ring i'm going to have that removed after I, I wrote to the clinic and talked to them about that and i said you know you have to know i'm more terrified about having my ring removed than having my boob removed and the reason is because of that swelling above the ring and you know even if i went to a jeweler for even for a jeweler to get that off without hurting me uh, literally, you know, he's, he's got to use a drill, a Dremel, brrr, you know, to cut through it. 
and I'm going, I'm terrified that they will they will cut my finger instead. So what I said was, is there any way they can cut that off once they've sedated me? Because if anything happens, I'm in the OR. Duh. Isn't that the place you'd want to be? And they understood my logic and they said they would they would do that for me. Um, so what I did with Yvonne while she was here, it's one of the things, it's literally, as I said, go through my house. And I'm glad I did because one of the things she said is, where is your extra backup um, milk powder? I think some of you know that I make my latte for my morning coffee. <laughs> first of all, you know, I think Jody's first comment was, did you fill up? the coffee reservoir, you know, the water reservoir before you leave home on on, when, on Thursday, you know, which is very good thinking. But I make my latte in that little machine next to my coffee maker, and I make it with water and skim milk powder, and it makes a great latte. So Yvonne knows me, you know, she lived with me for a long time. And it was interesting that um, she said, where's your milk powder in case you run out? What I have got up there uh, in, a, in a cupboard you can't see is I've got my flour, my milk powder, my macaroni, my oats, something else. Uh, right. All right. And they're all in. Um, <laughs> and of course my coffee um i've got them all in these sort of containers all right so i that's my flour on one of them and rice and ever so they're in a line up above my my um fridge last week i said to you do you want to hear another way to halve the amount of money you spend on coffee? And I never did finish that sentence, I don't think. We know that the first way is to buy cheaper coffee and good quality coffee and mix them 50-50. And Jody will tell you, because she's been doing it for about a year now, she will tell you it's amazing that what you taste is this one. You do not taste the cheap one. I don't know why. So that's a 50% saving right there. Well, find you, that's this price of the coffee but here's my second way what i do is for my second cup i don't put in a new pod into my curry i don't put a new pod in i leave the original one so my second cup of coffee is more remember that i'm doing it with a latte in my little latte machine there uh, what i'm doing is having more of uh, um, coffee flavored milk for my second uh, cup of coffee so and now that means I have dramatically saved how much coffee I use. Yeah, Jody's saying it has saved her a small fortune and no compromise to the taste. Yes, I think it, you, it's hard to believe, isn't it, Jody? It's a bit like try raspberry and rhubarb pie, Jody, rather than raspberry strawberry. All right? Like, who wants to eat tart raspberries with rhubarb? Well, I want to tell you. I, it took me a long time to convince Jody just to try it. And I'm pleased to tell you she did. And she told me I was right, big time. I like that. Hang on a second. I've got to get back to my quotes here. So Yvonne and I went through the house. And <laughs> she said, oh, God, that pie, a divine. Yes, rhubarb is amazing, but try rhubarb with raspberries. And you can even use frozen ones. Yeah, Jody, I told you that, Jody. Jody's saying, I will never use strawberry again. <laughs> There's something about that combination, and it's not tart. I don't even put sugar in mine, and it, it's amazing, the taste. So remember that looking after me this week is not is selfish, isn't it? But it's essential. How many of you agree with me? The most important person for me to please this week is me, because... Do any of you agree with me? I don't even know if I'll be here the next week. <laughs> so I think it's rather important that I enjoy every moment of this week. Um, now, that brings me to another point. One of the reasons I needed to talk to Yvonne is what if I don't make it out of OR? 
Now, I know some of you are going, no, don't say that, you know, that negative. It's not negative. You see, it's being kind to Yvonne. Why? She is the executrix of my estate. Anything happens to me, she gets the job of selling my house or whatever she wants to do with it and, you know, and dividing up everything that she knows where it all goes. So do you understand part of my reason is I needed to look her straight in the eye and say, what do you need that I haven't given you? What do you need to know? Where is it that I haven't told you? What do you need to know in case I don't come out of OR? And, you know, I really urge you, if you haven't written a will, that you make sure that you have one in place. So to me, it is not a pleasant discussion. Yeah, Alice is saying it's like writing your will. It's being responsible and taking accountability. Thank you, Alice. I totally agree with you. It's about love for Yvonne because she's going to be the one coping with it all. She and Doug, right? Michelle Obama said, to be a good parent, you need to take care of yourself so that you can have physical and emotional energy to take care of your family. So true. So Yvonne also has my power of attorney and also knows my wishes about uh, resuscitation, etc. All right. So very important that we quickly go through that in between bites of Sal's incredible mac and cheese. Um, <laughs> so how many of you know that even with everything going 100%, which we trust it will, don't, we don't know for sure, which is why I needed the conversation with Yvonne, uh, but the, the odds are pretty much in my favor here that I will come out of the other side and I will be drugged. Wow, interesting. Alice is saying... She had two of her closest friends needing to be resuscitated this year. Yeah, that's so sad to hear that you had to go through that. Um, so very important, if you haven't got what they call a living will, first of all, if you haven't got a will, get one. Um, but secondly, make sure you have a living will that says in the event that I cannot make my own decisions, in other words, I'm still breathing, but I cannot make my own decisions. This is what I would like to have or not have happen. All right. So um, it's a very important document and it is housed with my will. You know, they're together at my lawyers. So how many of you know that after I've gone out of operation, they will then have me in intensive care for a little while. While I, they make sure that I can, you know, function. I can open my eyes. I can talk. They will try to get me talk. Probably try to get me to stop talking. You know, guys know me. Um, but you know, once I've sort of cleared all their checklist things, they will then send me to a ward for me just to do the initial recovery. And I'm allowed to have visitors in that ward, and I know that Jess is going to stay with me the whole time. Um, she'll be in the hospital the whole time. So that as soon as I get, you know, halfway conscious, she'll be at my bedside. Ah, oh, just so cute. Mandy Hale said it is necessary and even vital to set your standards for your life and the people you allow in it. You get to set those boundaries, nobody else. And it doesn't matter if people are disappointed. Ah, thank you, Jeannie. Jeannie is saying we're praying for you every single night and we ask God to help you be strong. Well, I must admit that um, he's doing a good job of helping me. I pray for that strength too, Jeannie. That's what I pray for at night, the strength to be able to handle this with grace and also to be able to help you guys know it's possible to do, all right? It's possible not to get overwhelmed. The, the sad thing is, and I do want to warn you, if you end up, and Jody, I'm sure certain will tell you as well, if you end up with a diagnosis such as mine, so many people don't know how to talk to you anymore. It's just like, I'm still the same person. 
<laughs> you know, if they hadn't given me that news, I'd still be looking like this. I'd still be talking like that. Ah, interesting. Alice is saying that in Denmark, you can actually put all that information online. All right. It's linked to your social security number. Right. And she said she made her mom do one years ago. Uh, and it was taken into account before she died. Well done. I'm very proud of you for that. That's being a very responsible person. How about this one? It's, it said, and uh, Terry Cole said this. At first, you will probably feel selfish. That was my feeling this week. I was being selfish, but then I got over it. You feel selfish, guilty, or embarrassed when you set a boundary. Do it anyway and tell yourself you have the right to self-care. Setting boundaries takes practice and determination. Believe me, I know. Uh, don't let anxiety or low self-esteem prevent you from taking care of yourself. Now, can you imagine that somebody I love really dearly asked to come and see me um, the day before the operation? And I said, no, honey, I love you dearly, but no. No, no, I'll just come and give you, I said, no. You know, again, if you'd asked me last week, I would have been so grateful for the help because I got so many things I need to do. Uh, if you asked me in two weeks' time, I would say absolutely because I've got so much I need to do and I won't be able to do it. But Wednesday, the day before, the day when I have to have everything organized, packed up in suitable places, some to go directly to Doug's again and, and some other stuff when I'd got to get up and be showered again uh you know covered in antiseptic soap you name it when I've got to do all those things and be at the clinic by 6 45 in the morning the next day I am not having visitors on the day before I don't care how much I love you it's got nothing to do with my love for you it has everything to do with the, my love for myself you see changes let's be honest changes mean disruption my life is being disrupted. So is my body. And I know that they will put me on opioids when they get me out of, or you know, as they take me out of um, OR. I don't like opioids. They do funny things to my body that I don't like. Um, yes, thank you, Alice. Alice is saying, I would have said no too. It's prep day, both physically and mentally. Yes. And, you know, it's not that that person doesn't love me to bits. It's because that person loved me to bits that they wanted to come the day before, make sure I was okay. What they don't understand is I'll be okay if I'm left alone. If I if I have to do goodbyes and things, <gasps> no. <laughs> um, and how many of you know I'm happier just dealing with my plants and talking to them and praying that I get back within a week so that I can look after them some more? You see, walls keep everybody out. Boundaries teach people where the door is. It's not that I don't love you. It's like, right, as Alice has just said, may I quote you, Alice? I'm going to anyway. Alice said, the right intentions, but wrong timing for me. This is not the time I want to have visitors. I don't care how much I love you. And so I'm glad that you can see that. Um, by the way, with my cuttings, I've bought everything inside and I've taken cuttings where I can. I'm hoping that the plants themselves will survive, even though I won't be here to talk to them. Uh, but I've also taken cuttings as a sort of plan B. I'm not sure if it will work. I'm going to have to go and pick my my um, first three pepper peppers because the weather is just too cold now and we got peter we got sergeant pepper no we've got dr pepper sergeant pepper and peter pepper all right they all come in and i'll take a picture of them for you although they're not big peppers yet but i'll take a picture for you so you can see and they're all green because peppers are green until they ripen on the vine which mine are not going to do all right, so here's a, here's a little test for you about being a people pleaser. Is it true of you that you want to help others but don't want to be helped? 
If you can relate to that, then you're probably a people pleaser. You are a people pleaser if you haven't worked out where your boundaries are and able to say no. And by the way, remember, no is a complete sentence. You do not have to justify it. Yes, and Alice is correctly saying it's also important to let people know that it's not a rejection. I made sure I wrote an email uh, or, or a text to, to make sure they knew that I heard the love and the care and the kindness in what they offered. I just couldn't say yes to it. How many of you know that you do things just so you can get the praise? If so, you're a people pleaser. You see, if your self-worth is tied to helping others, you probably are a people pleaser. So that you know that, that that's me. How many of you learned to be a people pleaser in childhood? Don't want to upset anybody, so I'll make sure they're happy with me. How many of you have a desire to avoid conflict at all costs? Yeah, Alice is saying, I used to be a people pleaser. It only gave me a, a heartache in return. Yep. It's it's amazing. And you know, and again, I the pharmacy said to me when I was there this week buying the special sponges and things that I had to get, she said, Boy. She said, you're going to be just fine, so. And I said, well, I hope so. And she said, you know, you are a strong person. And I said, you don't know that. And she said, yes, I do. You believe you me, I, I deal with sick people all the time. And they don't talk like you talk. They don't smile like you smile. They don't um, do things the way you do things. Because when I told her I was keeping up my 6,000 steps a day, she said, okay, so you got cancer and you are busy putting in 6,000 steps a day. Uh -huh. <laughs> she said, and you don't think you're a strong person? And I go, no. She said, well, you are. And I said, well, what have I got to complain about, Touchwood? Um, I don't have pain. Finding better wood. Hold on a second. Lollipop stick is wood. Um, you know, I don't have pain. I have a couple of twinges, but I don't have pain. So I also had to realize that I was going to have to forgive myself for taking too much to Doug's. And I know I'm going to take far too much. And he's probably going to roll his eyes, and I don't mind. The reason is I am taking my big pillows on my bed. The ones that normally, you know, you just have there for show. You know, they are they're about this big and they're thick. Why? The first 48 hours, the more I can sleep sitting upright will actually be better. But to stop myself from rolling over, I need big pillows either side of me. All right. So that when I go to turn, I'm actually find it difficult because there's a pillow in my way. That's one thing. Uh, I'm taking my own, a certain amount of my own food with me. Not that Doug wouldn't buy it all for me. I just know that I want my own food in certain places. I want, you know, and, and he might not have some things that I need. So I'm taking some with me. And I'll take some pop with me as well, unless he tells me he's already bought it. You see, being comfortable is going to be my most important priority. God, Alice, you read my mind. Alice typed as I was talking that. She said, being comfortable is more important than anything else in recovery. I know that, Alice. I've had a few operations in my time. How about this one? If someone throws a fit because you set a boundary, it's just more evidence that the boundary was needed. All right? So they take it personally. That's their choice, not yours. So... How many of you know that for me, keeping my routines is part of my mental health, right? That I go out every day. Now, will I be rushing out the first day you know, that I'm home? No, because the most important, two things are really important in my recovery. Three, actually. One is that I sleep a lot. Two is that I move as much as I can. In other words, that I do get up and walk around and do things. Now, Dougie is 
start going to give me his spare room upstairs. How many of you know that I won't like that very much because I'll want to go downstairs? <laughs> and I'm going, well, that's good exercise. Um, ah, interesting. Yes, Alice is saying, can I repeat that, Alice, that last comment you made? That's, that's a fairly personal one, so I just want to make sure. All right. Um, thanks, Alice. Alice and I both agree on this one. You know, we've had we've had experience of big operations before. And Alice is saying that being comfortable is more important than anything else in recovery. She continued the sentence to say, and that's coming from somebody who's been severely uncomfortable and almost stuck in bed on opioids. Um I assure you that I will do everything I can to get off the opioids as soon as possible. And by the way, that's Tylenol-3 is an opioid. I didn't really know that. Ah, there you go. Alice is saying, no need to ask. If I type it, you can repeat it. Well, it's been a while, Alice. So I want to make sure you still know that. I still respect you and your comments. And I thank you for them. Um. How about this? Love yourself enough to set boundaries. Your time and energy are precious, and you get to decide how to use them. And you teach people how to treat you by deciding what you will and will not accept. So you all know, I believe, that I, I have routines. So I get up in the morning, I, I need two cups of coffee. I don't function without that. So, you know... Part of me is going, I duckily Dougie has a very good coffee machine, which I probably won't dare touch. <laughs> and he probably has very good coffee being Doug. So I don't think I need to take coffee with me. Um, ah, interesting. So Alice is saying, that's a good point. She's saying, not has been, it wasn't past tense. She's saying, I'm she's presently is stuck in bed now and hardly able to move her lower body. Wow. Yeah, you get to the doctor on that one. Yeah, I like this quote. How many of you can relate to this one? It says, you're not required to set yourself on fire to keep other people warm. <laughs> I'm laughing because one of the things that Yvonne said to me as we were going through the house trying to work out where would I need to reach up for things, we got to my bedroom and she said, boy, it's cooler in here. And then she said, it must be because it's so far away from the fireplace. And I said, yeah, it's always been much cooler here. And in my bathroom. I don't know what made me think to do it. Oh, no, she said, she said, have you, have you got the door open <laughs> you know, behind those blinds? And I went, no. Well, it turned out I had a window wide open from the summer. And I never lift those blinds because you know, I, I'm not in my bedroom it's during the day, so I can stay dark. And guess what? The window was open. <laughs> no wonder it was a bit chilly in there. How about this? To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. All right? It's the greatest accomplishment. So remember to forgive people, right? I've, I've had to do a lot of forgiving where I'm going, how could they even ask me that this week? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, like, and you know, it's not that they don't love you. They love you so much that they want you to know that and feel that, you know? And it's just like, yeah. <laughs> what I need is help. <laughs> Um, you know, and I don't need it this week. I needed it last week, and, and I'll need it when I get back. Um, so, how many of you, do you have, any of you have any questions of me around this? And how many of you think I'm putting on an act right now? All right. <laughs> um, 
I was so proud of Yvonne. I was really scared that Yvonne and I would start to cry. And even talking about it makes me want to cry. Uh, and then if we started to cry, I knew I would cry a lot and I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I really didn't want to do that. All right, Alice is saying, Sal, um, you're not putting it on. She knows me. Right? She knows what I look like when I'm acting. <laughs> So, you know, it's just like, I really, I really have to say to you, I have managed to keep my mind under control and my discipline under control far better than I would have thought. If you had asked me, you're about to get a cancer diagnosis, how are you going to react? I would have told you, I doubt I will be able to keep control. I would be worried sick of dying. I found out I'm not worried about dying at all. Isn't that interesting? See, I've done everything that I wanted to do in my life. Some things I probably would like to repeat, but you know, I've done them all. Jody's saying, bless you, Jody, thank you. She's saying that my integrity would prevent me from acting even if I wanted to. Yeah, even if I wanted to act. So when you, you remember that, Jody, when you see me without makeup on the other side, when I show you a picture to let you know that I'm okay. <laughs> Will you remember that uh, I, I am not going to act better than I feel? So if I look absolutely drawn <laughs> with huge bags under my eyes and whatever, you know, you know that feeling, Jody. you've been there. Any questions, anybody? I've got a meeting with the physio, a Zoom meeting with the physio on Tuesday, I think. I've got a lot of questions for the physio because I, there are things I want to know. You see, I believe they're, they're saying I need to do foot exercises every hour. I want to know, can I use my little bike? All right. When I say my little bike, I've got an under desk bike. And if you think about it, and Jody will know because she's got one as well, that you don't use your upper body at all with it. You just use your lower body. But what it's doing is it's making your blood circulate. Uh, and I have noticed, Jody, that between having Billy the bike, uh, the mini bike, and my Birkenstocks, uh, I had not suffered from edema this year, right? Since I've had the combination of those two. So. And, you know, my pharmacist, when she heard that I'm still putting in 6,000 steps a day, she just shook her head. She said, most people are curled up on the couch worrying themselves stupid. I said, I don't have time for it right now. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to anybody. I don't have time for that right now. Yeah, Jody's saying that it's amazing. She's found as well that using her elliptical has brought her swelling down. And that's why I think that, all right, now I want to make sure you all understand this. When they take out, they're going to take off the boobs, so I'll be lopsided. This boob will be here and this one won't. Uh, but they're also going to take two sentinel nodes out. They're up here. Why? They have to check, did the cancer get that far? And if it did, I got bigger problems coming. I don't want to worry about that yet. I'll worry about that if I have to after the operation. Um, so what I do is I get on Billy the bike, Alice, and I just lean back again on my, I've got a futon and a, I've got a futon, regular three-seater couch and a two-seater couch you know, in that configuration. So I just sit on the futon and I lean back and I binge watch and I just pedal while I'm binge watching. But I do know that I can pedal too fast sometimes. So what I will do is find out from the physio what heart rate can I go to. Now, there are four basic things. You can be in just regular heartbeat. Then you go into fat burn. Then there is cardio. And the fourth one is peak. I'm sure I'm not allowed to go into peak because they don't want the blood pumping that fast. You know, I've got too many things that have trying to heal themselves. I'm pretty sure also that they might not even want me to go as far as cardio. But I got a feeling that they will allow me to go just to regular walk, uh, walking pace and or um, getting into fat burn. Why? Because it means I'm exercising my legs. Exercising my legs is a really big 
thing to do. Now, the other really big thing to do, because they're taking these two lymph nodes, is I've got to make sure that my upper body is you know, circulating properly. <laughs> yeah. Alice is saying you have to make sure you don't watch anything too exciting. <laughs> I know what you mean, Alice. <laughs> I know you too. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> yeah, I, I was said to people that have, have phoned me, Alice, that, you know, if you, you're not ever going to help me by worrying about me. <laughs> you know, the way, the way that you help me, uh, and Jody will tell you this is true as well, uh, is to do what Manon did. Manon in France, as soon as she heard uh, what had happened, she immediately said to me, I have taken a few days to try and process this because I didn't want to come back with my stuff. All right. Her sadness, her, her, how scared she is for me. She said, I didn't want to do that. What she wanted to do was to go back to doing what Manon and I have done for nearly 10 years now, um, which is send each other cute pictures of puppies doing things. How many of you relate to that? That's helping me. Why? It's making me laugh. It's making me chuckle. It's making me smile. It's doing all the things that are good for me. Worrying about me doesn't help me at all. So, um, Manon, if you pick up on this broadcast, thank you so much. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I found one last night. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen it. I'm pretty sure you could just type in Doberman doing exercises. All right. I'm pretty certain that will get you to it. I saw this clip about a Doberman that literally watches television on his own. And they put on this exercise that somebody does, um, you know, yoga with their dog. Not yoga, that's another one. Uh, but they do exercises with their dog. And the Doberman follows all the instructions. All the instructions. <laughs> You know, amazing. And then there's another woman who does yoga with her her dog. And literally, she's doing down dog or whatever it is, you know. And she lifts a leg and the dog lifts a leg and she changes and the dog changes. And then the last move she does, she lies on her back and she picks, touches her toes with her hands, right? Imagine that, people. I can't even lift my shoulders, never mind touch my toes. While, you know, can you get your legs up high enough that you could touch your toes above you? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, anyway, but the Doberman, uh, not the Doberman, that, that's the Border Collie, actually can do that. He literally rolled on his shoes back and he held, you know, because for a dog it's easy. So, you know, to me, that's helping me. That is helping me. Um, I, I, You know, as difficult as it was, Sharon, for me to accept the gift card, I thought, you know, I'm going to say yes, because it works both ways. Number one, Sharon will be happy. And number two, I will be able to get what I desperately need for the winter. So thank you for the love. I felt it. Any questions? I assure you, if I think it's off limits for me, I will let you know. You know that it's my, my boundaries are pretty strong on that. Um, trying to think what else people would want to know if anything i just need to get something oh it's right here thirsty so i don't know all right so what can we do to best help me this week jody is asking me jody i would say um understand uh, this week and uh, up until the op you mean or after the op or both. Uh, just be there. Keep your prayers coming. That would be awesome. Uh, I'd appreciate that. Uh, before I, I would say, in your case, Jody, just keep doing what you always do, and um, look after yourself because I don't want to. I know this, you'll understand this and not take it personally. You'll understand where this is coming from. Uh, so I don't have to spend energy worrying about you not looking after yourself or that I think you're worrying yourself self sick, more sick. 
right? That that would distress me. So it's not that I don't want you to tell me the truth, because I, you know, that I definitely do want. So if you get worse, I need to know about it. I don't want you to hold it back. Better that I know, all right? Because you know I'd get really angry if I didn't know. <laughs> Women to be friends. Uh, and I thanked, I wrote and thanked Yvonne that she didn't um, burst into tears while she was here. I knew that she wanted to, and she knew I wanted to as well. But I thanked her and I said, you know, and again, it makes me cry even talking about it, but I said to her, I know what it took for you not to cry. And I want to thank you for being that courageous because I didn't want to cry either. You know, having a friend that cares as much as some of you care about me is, is a great privilege in my life, in my view. And so thank you for that. Thank you for caring. Um, I know that, you know, I said to Yvonne, the way that you can help me is to check the Dear Mama Sal mailbox, you know, in case anybody has sent anything there that I don't know about. Um, because, you know, you know, I'd be really upset if I didn't get to the mailbox for a month and hadn't thanked somebody, you know, that, that would upset me. So Yvonne is, you know, going to look after my mailbox for me at Dear Mama Sol's mailbox. So, you know, you look at these things, there's so many things you have to think about. I've got pages and pages and pages of documents about what I have to do between now and fr Thursday morning. And I don't want to spend all day doing them either. You know, and I'm busy. I know this will sound strange for you. I am busy doing everything I can with my left hand this week. Does that make sense, Shirley? All right. I am intentionally keeping my hand in my pocket while I get my laundry out. Um... I am practicing at night, sleeping on my back with both my arms on those pillows, right? So that it's not a surprise. Apparently, you, some of you know I've got a CPAC machine. I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand why I didn't sleep very well last night yeah. until I found out that it had disconnected. You know, one tube fits inside another, and I had must have done something. And I disconnected the two tubes during the night. And so that's why I didn't have a very good night because I didn't have any air coming in. I had the mask on, but you know, <laughs> the. Um, so we look at it and go, looking after myself now, between now and Thursday morning, very, very important. The. I will do everything I can to get a message to you guys to let you know that I am through the operation, right? I won't give you details or anything. I will just let you know in a, probably a couple of words or just literally out of operation. So you know, not only am I out of the operation, but I'm also capable of texting. I might sort of, you know, for another 12 hours straight after it, but I, I will do everything I can to get that message to you. Um, then... I don't know. I'm, I know I won't be doing a, a broadcast on Friday. That's for sure. Will I try to do one on Sunday? Possibly. Remember, I'm a guest in somebody's house. So that might be difficult. Now, <laughs> you got to think about all the things you do with your right hand. And I won't be able to stretch it at all. I'm going... What happens when I go to the bathroom? How far of a stretch am I allowed? Do any of you relate to this? I'm going, I better check on that. <laughs> um, you know, TMI, I know, but you know, they're all things you've got to think about. Uh, no, no deodorant for two weeks, probably. Yeah, I don't want to be near me. <laughs> um, what other things are there? You know, I can put my makeup on without stretching, can't I? Just a bit of powder, that's good. I, you know, I, the idea is if you keep your elbow to your body, right, you can do anything that you can 
do as long as your elbow is against your body. Uh, so that that's what I have to think about. But I'm practicing this week, doing a lot more things with my left hand. Now, if it snows, I'm not going to be doing the driveway, people. All right, that's when I'll be calling on the neighbors and going, help, please. Uh, I will not be pushing the garbage carts out to the road that first week. So, um, you know, those sort of things. And I won't be there filling it up for a week anyway, so that's pretty good. What other things can you think of? What other things have I forgotten? Um, I'm allowed to do light dusting. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I could milk this, couldn't I? I? I'm sorry it's a bit dusty, but I just had a mastectomy. I think people would buy that argument. What do you think? Then being me, I'd probably say, but they did say I'm allowed to dust, but I haven't bothered. <laughs> um, basically, yeah, Jody's saying exactly why when you do it. Yep. Not allowed to live a, lift a heavy pot. Think about that. If I'm feeding a family of five, which I'm not, um, how would I do that? Good question, Alice. I'll get to it. Um, I can't lift a heavy pot on my, uh, if I've got something boiling on my oven, my range top. Uh, all right. So Alice is saying, can I bring groceries in? Uh, luckily, I can lift grocery bags with my left hand. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be checking on that. Good question. Uh, and then bring them in with my left hand and put them up on here. And I'll be able to sort them here. Remember, it's not lifting up this hand above there. And if anything that goes into higher place in my fridge, I'll leave my left hand to put them in. Good question, Alice. I've got a plan for that. But I'd like to discuss that. Jody, could you make a note, please? I, if you can. If you can't, let me know and I'll make a note. Uh, but I, what I will do is talk to my physio about um, groceries. I'm pretty sure I can lift the bags with my left hand. If I can't, uh, Alice, my plan B is to leave the bags, because I will be ordering it, leave the bags outside, and then just literally pick up item by item and go put it away. Yes. That's true, Jeannie. They do say that you, the night before, you need to put on clean bedding, right, sheets and things, so that when I get home, uh, everything will be fresh for me to start, right? Uh, I even have to put on clean jammies to sleep in that night before. I'm going, why don't I go to the clinic in my jammies? How many of you agree with me? <laughs> makes an awful lot of sense to me that I actually go to the clinic wearing my PJs because I'm pretty certain when I get to Doug, the first place I'm going is to bed. <laughs> so why don't I just put my PJs on is my feeling. Uh, I meant to show her again the morning of the operation at four o'clock in the morning or whatever. It's like, really? Shower the night before and the next morning. Why? Mm. I guess in case you get hot and sweaty, but here's the thing. <laughs> I'm thinking I may not sleep that night at all. Right? Very strong possibility. I might stay up and binge watch on my couch and, and catnap as I need to and not actually go to bed properly because I don't think I'll sleep anyway. Can you imagine? They're going to take off a body part. And as I've said many times before, not the way I plan to lose weight this week, but, you know, it's going to happen. By the way, talking about that, you know, then they did the open wound biopsy. I actually can see the difference in my two boobs now. It's quite amazing, the difference of them. <laughs> so you're going to be even bigger difference this time next week. I won't be showing you. Um, so when they've done the operation, they're going to wrap me up in a very tight boob tube to keep everything in place. It'll also help me, you know, in case I accidentally stretch it, it won't allow me to stretch very much anyway. All right, so they're gonna really have a tight corset on me. Now, how comfortable is that gonna be? 
I expect it not to be comfortable. I expect it to be swollen. I expect that I will need ice packs under my armpit where they have um, taken out the lymph nodes. I expect to be really uncomfortable but taking the meds for that um, for the first 48 hours at least. But the question is, what can I do? All right? What will I do at Doug's to look after myself? I know that sleep is as important at that time as is exercise. So sitting on the couch doing nothing is not a good idea. Sitting on the couch with Billy, my bike, my, you know, my state little bike, mini bike, I think it's going to be a good idea. I just want to double check that. What I want to find out from the physio is how is she, if I pedal with my lower legs and do crochet with my top heart, Yes, I know that, Kimmy. Kimmy is saying that you will have drainage tubes. We talked about that earlier, Kimmy, and I already have special clothes to, um, you know, with pockets on the inside to put those uh, drainage bulbs into. But thank you for thinking of that. Alice is saying it's actually more comfortable and feels more secure than without the tight dressing. That's what I heard. Uh, the only thing that worries me, Alice, and, you know, maybe you know, because you've had it, experience of somebody having it. Um, you know, you've got to take it off every day to to wash, but isn't getting it back on again painful? I don't know why. It's getting it off, because yeah, I think it's Velcro. It's, it's kept together with Velcro. So I, the idea of stretching something over those incision marks, you know, I've got a feeling I won't be in a hurry to do that. So if anybody's got experience of that, uh, let me know. Um, all right, Jody's saying maybe think about joining a support group afterwards. Why, Jody? I know that comes from a place of love, and I get that. But why would I need that? I got you guys. <laughs> and you know, you know that the way I will heal is talking about it and sharing my experience and. You know, the way I will keep sane, the way I will deal with the loss is to grieve it with you. I, I, I've got my own ready-made support group. That's how I feel. All right, Alice is saying not to worry because I'll have bandages protecting the incision. Good. Jody's saying to discuss with women who are having similar experiences. Jody. You know me really well. If I go to a support group, what will I end up doing? Now, you've got to think about this. You've known me for a long time, Jody. And Jody says you'll end up running it. Yeah. And will I be supporting everybody else instead of looking after me? Will I be going out of my way to make sure they're laughing? Will I be me? Yeah. <laughs> so that's probably why I wouldn't join one. By the way, Jody saying dumb idea I had. No, you know something, Jody. It was a great loving idea. Now here's why. Why I want to tell you when I was talking to the nurse. You know, I had an appointment with the nurse before um, hand, and she was busy. She said, "I'm going to send you a resource list," and I said, "Okay." And she said, that, that's got things on it that you're not going to need, I don't think. And I said, like, and she said, well, support groups and da-da-da. But she said, I got a feeling you, you probably could be running them. And that kind of hurt. <laughs> and I said, really? And she said, yeah, you've got an incredible mentality. And I said, yeah, I'm mental. You know? um, but, but, you know, it was... Uh, I, I thought that was really kind of her. And, but she said, seriously, you've got an incredible mentality. You, you, you have just, every question you've asked me was very relevant and very uh, intelligent to ask. But not normal pe you know, not many people ask those sort of questions. Jody's saying, I'll get, <laughs> so I will get back to the list and then update it, reformat it and send it back. Yep. Um, <laughs> 
All right. Uh, yes, good point, Kimmy. Very good point. Kimmy's saying that her doctor told her not to join a, an online group because of all the misinformation. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And by the way, what the other thing I, that I found, unfortunately, is quite a lot of those um, groups are moderated by people who are trying to sell you stuff. You know? Um, so, you know, to me, it's just like, I, but I hear, I hear the comment. I'm not going to discount it, Jody. I'll have to think about that. Am I, am I cutting that off without even giving it consideration? No. I'll give it some, some idea um, and some thought. And maybe it's part of my recovery is to, to do it so that I can help others. Just hold on one second, people. Um, so... Uh, I need to get off the call. That's uh, Cisco trying to call me. So, uh, everybody, hopefully, by this time next week, you will have heard from me. Yes, Alice, I quite agree. Alice is saying, listen to people who dare to be honest about it. You know, I'm pretty certain that when they do that injection, and I probably told you about this, they're going to, I have to go really early because they have to inject me uh, in my nipple area with dye first thing in the morning so that that dye travels into the lymph nodes. I'm pretty certain that's not going to be an erotic experience. All right? Um it's going to be a bit like them putting the um, wire in that they did. But the good news is it's only one. Uh, so, but, you know, I, I'm going to be dreading that. That's why I don't think I'm going to sleep very well. And I forgive myself for dreading it, right? Because I'm pretty certain it's not going to be painless. I think it's going to hurt. Thanks, Jeannie. I appreciate that. And I love you too. And I and love to both you and York and to Misty, of course. And Kimmy, prayers back to you. I hope your pacemaker is doing well. And all of you will see you next week is, you know, what I can say. For all of you, know how much I've appreciated your kind thoughts and prayers. Uh, they do make a difference. I, I smile a lot when I see them. And as I said, if you you know, feel free to send me anything you think will make me smile. And that will help me. Oh, interesting. Alice is saying the nipple area is not as painful. I've had it done a few times. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Alice. <laughs> or are you just being kind to me? <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next week, hopefully. Uh, or the, you know, more likely than not. Isabel, have a wonderful birthday. Thank you for coming to see me on your birthday. She says, I will pray for you. Love you a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I love you too. Thoughts and prayers, everybody. I love you all dearly. Jody. thank you for all that you've done to look after me while you have been so sick yourself. I don't have words for that, except thank you. This is dear Mama Sal saying, we'll see you soon. And if anybody can find my little dongle, could you send it back to me, please? Bye-bye, everyone.